Hey there, I want to show you something cool. Just imagine if your chatbot could not only write code, but read files, write files, install dependencies, run applications, and even open browser and manipulate it to test what kind of code it wrote. Let me show you, because Claude today with model context protocol servers can do it. Let's give it this URL where I already have a server and ask it, what is this project about? And it will ask me to give it allowance to use this kind of tool from file system list directory. And I will allow it for this chat so that on next calls it will be able to call it without asking me. Sadly, the way it works now, you will need to approve each new type of command. So now it wants to read the file. I allow it for this chat as well. So it's reading the files. It's reading package.json where there are configurations for full stack JavaScript servers. And now it sees that this is a server, it, this kind, it, it has this kind of features, and so on and so on. Uh, but we can now ask it also to install and run it. Let's give it a try. It will ask again to allow to run commands. And we can see that it runs command to install. Then it will ask to read output. It wants to investigate if command succeeded or not. It reads outputs of running command. And now it runs the server. And it checks again, reads the output, sees that it is running on browser port 3000. And I already see it in my browser. Now, but this is not the way I want it to take a look because it can also open a browser and take a look. So wait, let's deny. I don't want it to write any files. Uh, what I want is for it to open the browser and take a look if it's running. Open the running URL and see what is there. So now it asks me to allow Puppeteer Navigate. Puppeteer is a library that uh, can manipulate Chrome for browser automation. It's often used for testing. Let's allow it. And here we can see that it's launching a browser and asking for allowance to run a command Puppeteer Screenshot because it wants to take a screenshot. Let's allow it. Now it took a screenshot and it can see the page. Let's open this up and see. So this is what uh, Puppeteer browser answered to it. Here is a screenshot. And let's test one more thing. Can it see what is on screenshot? What is time on a screenshot? Time on screenshot is 12.51.22. 12.51.22. So it sees the screenshot. It can manipulate the browser, see what's happening in the browser. It can now make changes. Let's ask it to make a change. And date to the code and see if it worked. So it works on its own, kind of. Now it tries to read the file of the server, asks me to allow to create directory. Why is it creating a directory? Actually, it didn't need to create a directory, but uh, now it asked me to allow to write a file because it rewrites the file. It added time and date. It taking a screenshot again. You can see that it refreshed. We see the date 18, 12, 2024 and says that, yes, great. I see time 12, 52, 50 and date 18, 12, 24. So it made a change and it tested the change worked on its own. You didn't need to be a tester for it, it tested itself. And this is something I like dreamed about for a year or two. This is the type of workflow I want with AI. I want just like, I don't know, write some kind of asks to make a tests, read the tests and understand the tests and then make it write the code, run it, test it, install until it works and then it works. It just did it. 
So this is what I wanted to show you today and I will tell you a little bit more about how it works and how you can set it up on your machine. It's a little bit finicky. Like I'm playing with it for a couple of weeks and having trouble, but when it works, this is how it works. Now let's take a look at how it works and how you can set it up on your own machine. Here is a repo. Uh, it's a Wesom MCP servers. I will share the link in the description and in comment. Uh, and it's a repo collecting all kinds of servers that were already made. And you can see that if there are even categories like version control, finance and stack, custom data platforms, command line tools similar to mine, communication, and so on and so on. A lot of tools that like give access to cloud to various kinds of things. And the way you add them currently is a little bit for tech people. I will show you the official way and I, then I will show you how to set up my thing and it will be a little bit easier. Let's say, let's take a look at file systems. So let's go to file systems and here is server file system. It's original Anthropic server that uh, they released as part of it. You can see what it can do. Like read and write files, create list of directories and so on and so on, search through files, get file metadata and so on and so on. Uh, so the way the, these tools use, they expose a service uh, protocol in your system that then Cloud can connect to and communicate with. And below, to use it with Cloud Desktop, what you need to do is to find this file and add this part to it into MCP servers. How do you find the server? Uh, I will show you on Mac. Uh, on Windows, it's in a little bit different place. but. I, you will not need to by end of this tutorial to actually go there. I will show you how I do this. So let's open my user folder on Mac. And you need to go to library, but you may not see library here. What you need to do is click on the show view options. And here, click on show library folder. Now there is library folder. In it, you need to go inside, find application support. Sorry, just too quick. Find application support. Go then to cloud. And here, you need to find a file called Cloud Desktop Config, but it may not be there and you maybe need to create it. For me, it was not there. Let's open and see what's inside. And inside, we see uh, the config with MCP servers, and you can already see three servers here. I have my terminal server, I have file system server that we just checked, and Puppeteer server that controls the browser. So this controls terminal, this controls file system, and this controls a browser. And to add a new one, you just need to like put here a comma and add this configuration part that is usually in these. Uh, part of this is also arguments. And here you can see for this one, two arguments are folders that this uh, server is allowed to view and edit. So for me, you can see that I give it access to just my user folder on Mac. On Windows, maybe you will want to give it access to whole disk. Depends. Depends on how you use the system. So anyways, this is the official way how to add them. After you do that and you start the uh, cloud, you will see here them loading. Thing is that they are being installed like this and PX. It installs the service from here. Uh, from repository with this kind of name. So it will install and run them and connect to them. And as they connect, you will start seeing here more and more tools. So this is the official way. But let me show you, let me close this. Let me delete the file. And let me show you how my way works. Now you will need to have Node.js. I also have a blog article where I go a little bit more into depth into this, uh, so I will link it in the description. But let me show you how mine works. So here is a repo. I will share the link. What you need to do is you need to download it. Then you need to unarchive it, like open it. And here is a folder with the project. Now you will need to uh, open a terminal here. Here is a terminal. And all you will need to do is when you have node, you will have NPM installed in your system. And all you will need to do is to write npm run setup. What this will do is that it will install everything that needed for this. Where it is? npm, 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 npm install. It then will build the server and then it will go and set up cloud server, which will create this uh, cloud config file for you. We can try to take a look if it did. 
So here we are again in Claude, and we can see that there is config file. And it adds not only itself, it adds all three servers that I showed you in this video. So you can see here a terminal uh, from your folder, dynamically added link. Then you can see file system server, and you can see that it will use your current user home folder by default, but you can then go and change if you want to give it access, restricted access to other folders. And it also installs Puppeteer. So now you will need to run the Claude, and let's see what happens. So Claude is starting. We already have 9 tools, 18 tools, 25 tools. They all installed and are here now. And we can start again using them like uh, on what operating system are we? Let's ask that and see what it does. Let me check the environment, run the command, you name minus a and it's macOS Darwin. So yeah, we are on macOS. And this is how you install it to my way. You only will need to have Node.js installed and I will have a blog article with concrete steps for you to follow. So that's how it works. So before we go to conclusions, you probably have one question. I showed you how this works on Mac. Does it work on Windows? And it does, but with some caveats. Here you can see that I'm running it on Windows. I have all the tools loaded, but not really. Uh, if you paid attention, I had 25 tools on Mac, and here I only have 18. Why? Because sadly one of them failed to load, and it was Puppeteer, the one that controls the browser. So you can use it on Windows, with Terminal, with uh, file editing, but sadly opening and controlling browser and getting screenshots failed for me. I get some kind of errors of setup. This is not my problem. This is problem with the server and the windows. So yeah, this is what I meant by this being early and being more for technical users. If by any chance you know why this happens, leave a comment below and I will pin you because it will help people on windows to get the full setup to replicate what I did. Uh, yeah, otherwise it's similar. You just download the folder, Open the terminal. Uh, if you have node installed, just do npm run setup. It will install everything, create uh, the config file. Config file, by the way, is on your main hard drive in your username, uh, for, like not username, in your user folder, in an app data, roaming, cloud, and it's there. So in case you want to find it later, that's the folder. Uh, if you want to add more servers manually. But otherwise, just run this setup and it will create everything for you with mine. The link is down in the description. So that's it about setting up on Windows and Mac. Now, um, next thing I wanted to do was to draw some conclusions and also compare it to ChatGPT. So why? Well, first question for me, after I saw model context protocol, was how is it different from custom GPTs with actions? Because uh, ChatGPT can also connect in a similar way, but to online services. I actually have a video on my channel, you can check it out, where I show you how ChatGPT connects to GitHub to investigate code on GitHub in the same way that Claude was investigating files here. And the way it works is that you just give it API of a service online and it can make calls to it, which it has its pros and cons. For example, this works in browser and this works on mobile, while Claude only works locally. So ChatGPT works with servers, Claude works with local machines, and it has its own pros and cons. Because uh, here, again, works on mobile and browser. Here, service needs to run locally, which means you need to s install it. It has all kinds of issues. You need to, like Python for some of them, Node.js for the others. It's a bit challenging. Here, it's one click. Just go to GPT Store, find the one that you want, and work with it. So pros and cons. On the other hand, it's harder for ChatGPT to work with your local files due to that in the same way that Claude does here. So what do you like? Do you like to work with local services on your local machine or do you like working in browser, on mobile and desktop with services online? Now it is possible to connect ChatGPT to local files. It's just challenging. I do actually have a project called ChatGPT Server Commander that does that, that does very similar things to what Claude does. It's just very challenging to set up and not many people succeeded. Well, I do use it on my machine. So this is for the comparison. And uh, I, like between ChatGPT and Claude, I'm ChatGPT user. Why? Because it has many interesting features. 
But with this, I think Claude are make, starts to make first steps towards me being interested in Claude, because now Claude will have tools through this MCP servers. Uh, but I still have a push list. I still want a marketplace, so it's one click install and maybe monetized. This is actually at what I, I, in my view, OpenAI with custom GPT store so far failed in this. It is one click installs, but they are not like, I, I wouldn't say the store is even remotely as successful as app stores on mobile phones. So I'm interested in MCP marketplace. I hope Anthropic gets there. Next is mobile. I have no idea how they can do this. It will be cool if they allowed this kind of features in on mobile. And probably it would mean connecting to online services instead of local machine. But it would be interesting if they had like local machine things and also things that work in browser and on mobile with online services. Then there is internet search. There are already services, MCP servers, that do internet search for you in Claude, uh, which I intend to test. But I don't expect it to be better than what uh, ChatGPT does now or Perplexity. So kind of hard to do. They will need to improve UX in my view. Then there is voice. Uh, Claude doesn't have voice. In my view, voice in and voice out in ChatGPT is an incredible feature. And this cannot be added through MCPs. Kind of. Actually, maybe it can. An interesting idea. But again, we'll be challenging like with internet to have a good UX for this. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to take a look at and that I can actually make myself is diff editing. The thing is that currently, as you saw, uh, Claude rewrites files completely, which is slow, expensive, uh, eats your quota for Claude, and it also has another issue. Uh, it potentially introduces errors uh, by rewriting files completely. It changes things, not only things you asked for, it like could accidentally change things in, in places you didn't want when it rewrites large files. And this, I think, can be done through MCPs. Maybe this file server can be modified. I want to play with this at some point. Uh, if it's done correctly, it can actually make Claude competitive with tools like Cursor Editor. I mean, it can now like search through files, read files, write files. It can diff edit, it can run, test, and set up. Imagine one tool doing it all, doing internet search, voice, like everything, including code editing and writing apps for you. Isn't that cool? Well, currently, there is no tool like this. Cursor cannot do many things. Claude cannot do many things. But, it, but with MCPs, it feels like it's first steps for Claude to start going there. And I wish it good luck. I, I honestly hope that it gets there. So this is all I had for you today. Uh, what do you think? Was this interesting? Was it useful? Do you want diff editing of files in Claude? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And if you found it really useful, then leave a tip by using Super Thanks. Thank you and see you next time.